Hello and welcome to another video in the Europi series. In this series we are taking a closer look at the Europi from Allen Synthesis. In this video we're going to take a look at the Bernoulli gate script. The Bernoulli gate script was inspired by branches from mutable instruments, which I think was inspired by the um, Swiss physicist and mathematician Daniel Bernoulli. The Bernoulli principle states that when the speed of a fluid increases, the pressure decreases. So how does that apply to your rack? A Bernoulli gate in your rack essentially uses an input and two outputs. When a signal is received at the input, there is a probability that, that signal will be output from output 1 or output 2. The Europi Bernoulli gate script actually has two Bernoulli gates that share the same input. So we send a clock or trigger to the digital input and then that appears or that's essentially replicated to two Bernoulli gates. The first Bernoulli gate uses outputs 1 and 2. The second Bernoulli gate uses outputs 4 and 5. There are two additional outputs, one per Bernoulli gate. Output 3 and output 6. Output 3 outputs a gate whenever a gate is received at the digital input. Output 6 outputs a gate whenever outputs 1 and 4 are high. The behaviour of the outputs on the first row is controlled by knob 1. You can see it's changing on the screen there. And then, you guessed it, the behaviour of the outputs on the bottom row are controlled by knob 2. Additionally, the first Bernoulli gate, so outputs 1 and 2, can also be controlled using the analogue input. So a 0 to 5 volt, or 0 to 10 volts I think, we'll need to test that. A voltage at the analog in will affect the probability or affect the control. The Bernoulli gate has three different modes and we cycle through those modes using buttons, uh, buttons 1 and 2. Button 1 for the top Bernoulli gate and button 2 for the bottom Bernoulli gate. The first mode, trigger, sends a trigger out of 1 and 2 based on the probability that is set here. So all the way to the left only output 1 will fire, all the way to the right only output 2 will fire and in the middle it should be a nice balance of both. In gate mode the output is held high so instead of sending a trigger as in trigger mode the selected output or the, the output that has been decided by the Bernoulli gate function stays high until the other one is selected. The control is still the same so all the way to the left and output 1 will stay high and then moving further to the right output 2 will go high more and over on the far right output 2 will stay high. The final mode is toggle mode. This works in a similar way to gate mode where um, it will sort of flip-flop between the two but the control is different so over on the far left hand side there is no flip-flopping at all so it will stay with one and then as we move it over further to the right we get more flip-flopping and then on the far right it will alternate between outputs one and outputs two or four and five depending on which gate you're controlling with every input so let's get creative and play around with some patches using the Bernoulli gate in this patch I have the master clock just out of shot here on the left hand side set to 120 BPM. And the output 1 is essentially sent to the clock input, the digital input, on the Bernoulli gate. I also have output 2 which is set to divide by 4 and that's triggering a kick drum on the VPME.d quad drum. Output 1 of Bernoulli gate 1 is sent to the crucible here and it's triggering the edge on the crucible and output 2 is triggering the mid so we can get slight different variations of the, the crucible sound.
in this patch, I have a volt per octave sequence coming from the qubit bloom, and that is driving the Paradox Noise Reap VCO. The gate output from the qubit bloom is going into the input here on the Bernoulli gate, and I'm using both Bernoulli gates here. So from the first Bernoulli gate, output one is driving an envelope on the ornament and crime. Output two is driving another envelope, a different envelope on the ornament and crime. And output three is driving a third envelope. Output three here, the purple cable, is uh, essentially one of the outputs, the right-hand output of the second Bernoulli gate. The envelopes from the ornaments and crime, you will see on the screen how they're uh, different envelopes in a second, they are driving three different things. Uh, so the first two, outputs one and two, are driving frequency one and frequency two on the QPAS. And then the third envelope, being triggered by this purple cable, is um, sending an envelope to the pulse width modulation input on the noise reap paradox. Okay, so let's have a listen. Okay, so let's introduce an LFO into here and see what variations we can get. So there is a lot more going on in this patch. I'm essentially using the Bernoulli gate script, which is uh, down here running on the Allen synthesis, Europi. I'm using it to control the rhythm because it's controlling the clock. It is also controlling the parameters of a VCO. It is clocking a, um, a stepped LFO, and it's also changing the um, filter parameters. So let me walk you through this one. I think I'm pretty much using it to its full extent here.
So I'm using all six outputs on the uh, Bernoulli gates. Uh, there's a clock coming in on this pink cable here. The first Bernoulli gate is driving two envelopes running on the ornament and crime, uh, running the peaked script. And then the third, which is essentially a copy of the clock, is driving a fourth envelope. On the other Bernoulli gate, I have got one of the outputs driving envelope number three. And then the other envelope, whenever that is fired, it advances the clock on a Turing machine here. The Turing machine, as I said, is being clocked by the second output of the second Bernoulli gate. This is sending uh, pitch CV into the uh, instro harmony, which is quantizing it. And then that's been output to uh, rings up here. You can see rings got all sorts of cables going into it. We've got a number of different parameters that are being modulated by um, envelopes and also a clep diaz, which is just up here that you can't see. Let's do the clep diaz first. So clep diaz uh, is produces stepped, a stepped LFO or um, stepped CV pattern. This is being clocked by the um, si output number six, which is essentially an and, a logical and of um, the first outputs of the two Bernoulli gates. So whenever that fires, it advances the steps. That is going into the shape parameter on nano ring. So it's, it's creating um, pitch variations as we go along. Two of the envelopes here, so outputs one and two from Bernoulli gate number one. They are going into bright and damp inputs on the nano rings. And, and then let's do the, um, the other envelopes here. So one of them is driving the frequency, so frequency number one input on QPAS. The other is driving one of the crazy inputs on the QPAS. Um, it's not really documented what it does, but essentially it's affected resonance and a few other things. And because all of these envelopes are being triggered in sort of randomly and at different times, it creates a really nice variation to the patch. So um, let's have a listen.
So there you have it. I don't know about you, but I'm quite pleasantly surprised at how much fun and how powerful Bernoulli gates can be, especially with um, two Bernoulli gates. If you enjoyed this video, maybe you'll enjoy other videos in the Europi series. Check them out on my channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time.